So welcome to the fourth video in the Digital DJ Tips Getting Started with Tractor mini-series. This video is all about queuing, hot queues, queue points, and using functions like Snap. Over to you, Steve. So what is a queue point? Well, if you cast your mind back to one of the earlier videos where I showed you the two decks and the mixer that uh, the traditional DJ setup was, well, DJs back in those days, when they were putting on their next tune or getting it ready to play, they would put the needle at the beginning of the track, scroll forward a bit until they found the first part of the music, usually the first beat. What they're actually doing is they're queuing the record up. It was queued up and ready to go. So that's where the word cue point comes from. And you can do exactly the same thing with your tracks in Tractor. You can set a cue point so you can drop it in uh, at the exact moment that you want to. So there are two types of cue points available to you in Tractor. One is a temporary one and there are also hot cues. And on any track, you can set up to eight hot cues, um, if you're so inclined. Um, but to begin with, most of the time, you just set up a cue point at the beginning of the track. So first of all, let's have a look at the temporary cue point. So we've got our track loading onto a deck here, and you can see the waveform at the beginning here. It's very, very clear where you can see the first beat. Now, I want to actually set my cue, cue point at that first beat. So what I do is I, get it nearby, find that first beat. That's where I want my cue point. And if you see here, there's a button here for cue, which I can click. And if you saw the little flag that was underneath there, it moved to the point where the playhead is. So there's a cue point set there now. So I can either click that button to play from there, or I can use cue on the keyboard. And that cue point is now set, but it's not permanent. And I'll show you what I mean by that. If I move forward in the track, pause it there, and I press Q again, it's moved that Q point to a new place. So now if I go back to the beginning of the track, it's not there anymore. So that's okay. If you only want, ever want that Q point to be at the beginning, then that's fine. You only need one Q point, the temporary one, that will do you. But if you want that cue point or any others to be saved so that the next time you load the track up, they're in the same place, you're gonna to need to use hot cues. And let me show you how to do that. Here at the bottom of this window is a little arrow, it's a tiny little arrow, it's easy to miss, but if you click that, it gives you some more detail as to what's going on in the deck. And here you've got the option to look at the cue section. And here you can see eight buttons here. These are your eight hot cues, and they're all controllable by the keyboard on your computer. Okay, so let's look at that first one. I actually want to turn that temporary cue point into a permanent cue point. I want my cue number one to be the first beat of this track, and I want that to be permanently there. So what I'm going to do is exactly the same thing. Find that point, and in order to put that cue point down on the keyboard, it's button number one for the left-hand deck. And there you go. If you see, it's put a flag there with a number one on it. So there's now a permanent cue point there, uh, which is cue point number one. Just to let you know, if we were using the right deck, it would be the buttons six and upwards that would do the same things for you that I'm doing on the left deck here. And you'll find those on the keyboard shortcut mappings, which hopefully you've downloaded and you can get it underneath this video as well. So now we've got that cue point set at the beginning of the track. But there's a slight issue with this cue point. It's, it's close to the beginning of the track, but it's not right on the beat. And the way that we can have a look at that is we can actually zoom into the waveform here. If you just hover your mouse over the waveform, click the little plus button, and each time I click it, we're zooming in closer to the waveform. And you can actually see there's quite a big gap there between the cue point and the first beat. So if I want to be doing precise mixing with this track, I'm giving myself a bit of a disadvantage there because my cue point isn't exactly on the beat. So what can we do about this? Well, that happened because I was in slightly the wrong place when I first laid the cue point down. But Tractor is able to help me with that, with the feature which is called Snap. And it's this little button over here, the S just under the main level output. What that means is that anything that I'm doing in here, mainly clicking around the track, or laying cue points, Tractor will automatically snap what I'm doing to the closest beat. So it kind of takes the human error out of it, if you like. So what's happened here is that this cue point number one is now a mistake. It's in the wrong place. So first thing I need to do is get rid of it. So you can delete it by using the command control and one, which means control for delete and one for deleting cue point number one. And now I can get the playhead close to the beat as we were before. And this time when I put my number one, 
you'll see it puts the flag right on the beat. It's done it for me. So that is now perfectly, perfectly lined up for the first beat of the track. And as you can see down here, it's actually showing that the number one is now blue. It shows that there's a cue point in the number one slot. So that may be all you need, just a cue point at the beginning of your track. But what if you actually want to put a cue point somewhere else, maybe at the end of a breakdown, so it's a, a different section that you might want to drop into? Well, you can do that by scrolling through the track here or just playing through it and listening through it. And when you get up to the point you want to put your cue point, <laughs> Yeah, so I'd like to put a cue point right on that drop there at the end of that breakdown. You can use your mouse to drag the track back roughly to where it was. Do the same thing again, but this time choose an empty slot. I'm going to go with number two. And there you go. And also you can see there how by playing the keys rhythmically, You can jump around to different parts of the track so you can start to have a lot of fun with cue points. And you can do the same thing, you can actually drop a cue point in whilst it's playing if you want. You don't have to stop and move it like that because Snap will put it on the right beat for you. As long as you're pretty close, it will get it right. So let's try and do that here, cue point number three at the end of this breakdown. Yeah. So there you go, and uh, if I'd made a mistake or I wanted to move them, I've already shown you the command to delete them. So that's an introduction to cue points and hot cues. Hope you found that useful. See you in the next video.